This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one website building platform. Last time I worked on my 3D printed robotic head, I used 18 magnetic panels to pin down its silicone face to mechanisms and framework underneath. As I was looking for ways to improve this design, I uncovered a complex rabbit hole of patents, incomprehensible legal language, and highly disturbing illustrations. Before delving into the scary legal world of the silicone face, however, I really needed to sort out this design. I really racked up a lot of technical debt in the last design, by designing some pretty important parts in Blender, which just made it really difficult to improve and maintain the design compared with CAD. So I set out to rework this whole frame design, this time with assembly and maintainability in mind. I wanted to make sure you could add or remove each module independently, eyes, brows, and mouth, and it just kind of generally bulked everything up and made it more robust. I have been hesitant to publicly release anything on this design yet, even though I've said it will be available for free eventually, and that's just because I wanted to make sure it was ready, but I am now going to begin to tentatively release some versions that I'm more confident about, more on that after we talk about the skin. So in the previous version of this head, I held on the skin by sandwiching it between magnets. My thinking here was that a lot of humanoid robots try really hard to look perfectly realistic and obviously end up in the creepy uncanny valley. So by intentionally making it look stylized and robotic, I thought that I would avoid that kind of uncanny valley look. I ended up realizing that there are actually more subtle ways of avoiding the uncanny valley. And actually my face sculpt design was already kind of stylized and vaguely sort of anime proportioned. And just the fact that the skin is white it already looks a lot less creepy than some of the others. So the next step to improve the design was pretty obvious. A lot of you guys commented it and it was pretty clear to me too that a drastically better way of making this work would be to have the magnetic panels concealed inside the silicone face. I read one comment that put me off however. Just so you know that um, companion doll company Real Doll has a patent on magnetic attachment skin for robots. So I did some digging, I did a Google patent search and found a patent by a company, Realbotics, which I actually don't think is uh, one of these, but maybe does have some affiliation with one of these. And ah, patent expired within days of the comment being left. So with a reassured confidence, later revealed to be naivety, I set out to try this design. I knew that to really make this properly, I would need a jig to hold all of the panels in the right place simultaneously. But to just test the concept, I used the previous version's mold and just gradually layered up the silicone and incrementally added the magnetic panels. This was a mess, it took forever, and I had to use all kinds of creative ways to get the panels to stay in position while the silicone set. Now, since I had some spare time between silicone pores, I took the chance to fix a few lingering issues in the design, and also finally carved out a bit of time to work on something I've been putting off for way too long, my personal website. As someone who does bits of work here and there, sometimes a commission, sometimes a sponsorship, and recently made redundant, I need a kind of hub to keep my portfolio, contact details and whatnot, and Squarespace was a really good way for me to start building it. If you haven't tried Squarespace before, it's a really easy way to make a great looking website without needing to code anything from scratch. I just picked one of their templates, something clean that would work well with photos and embedded videos, and then customised it with my own colours, fonts and layout. I'd been putting it off thinking it would be a chore, but it was actually pretty fun to use. One of the features I ended up really liking was the portfolio builder. I've spent hours in the past making these from scratch, adjusting the margins, the spacing, the fonts, but Squarespace makes it super easy to whip up something with galleries, videos, text blocks, whatever fits. Plus, it's all responsive, so it looks good on your phone without any extra work and it includes basic SEO stuff to help people find your site more easily. Hosting is included and connecting a custom domain is super simple. Mine is live now, I'll link it below if you're curious. So if you've been meaning to make a website for your own work or just want a better way to present what you're doing, you can start a free trial at squarespace.com and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash willcogley to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now, although my skill in electronics design has been gradually improving over the years, I feel like I'm getting a reputation for making some truly spectacular rat's nests with a blatant disregard for cable management. So I set aside some time to really think about how I wanted this system to work. One idea that was suggested to me in my Discord group was to take a kind of modular approach to the different subsystems in the design. The eyes, for example, are a separate project, and so maybe each component should have its own discrete PCB they can easily plug into any of the other components. So I booted up Easy EDA and I designed a board that would be compatible with the mouth, eyes, and the eyebrows. For the mouth, I calculated that in a worst case scenario, with all of the 11 servos maxing out all at once, 
there could potentially be a current draw of like 10 amps. So on JLCPCB's parts library, I found this XT60 connector massively disgustingly overspec with a 60 amp of peak current draw and I put them into this chunky board with double thick copper traces, loads of big capacitors and room for a Raspberry Pi Pico to drive everything. At the same time I designed a petite board for the eyes and brows which should never exceed 3 amps. On every board I put a pair of quick connectors, that's Q-U-I-I-C, which is a neat standard for connecting circuits using an I2C connection. I spent some time wiring up everything as neatly as possible. This whole system appears to be working really well, which is in no small part due to the excellent PCBs generously provided to me by JLC PCB. In my opinion, the best quality, best value for money and fastest PCB manufacturer. Come on now, that's the holy trinity. So a big thank you to JLC PCB and I really recommend you check them out for affordable, fast, reliable PCBs. I unpeeled the new face from its mold and went to place it on the head. Immediately, the magnets clunked into position with a satisfying sound. I'd expected them to misalign and, and take some time to get lined up properly, but for whatever reason, this system worked beautifully and it took a 10 minute long installation process into an instant snap. How's that for DFA? As I went to make some notes on my success for the video I'd be releasing later, I looked back at the pattern and was confused. Wait, which one was it again? Expiry date 2039? Magnetically adjustable facial contour? What does that even mean? So if you've ever looked into patterns before, you'll know that it's not a fun time. There's this kind of legal language that gives you psychic damage if you look at it for too long. So after some intense reading and having to face diagrams like this, it did appear that this company has a pattern on a robot face with magnetically adjustable facial contour, which is pretty much exactly what I'm doing here. But wait, doesn't that Disney animatronic have magnets to attach to skin? Okay, they're only using magnets in places where the skin will be static, so presumably they sidestep this pattern issue because these magnets are not being used for adjustable facial contours as they word it, just simply for mounting. Hmm. Back to the brain to distract myself now. So as it turned out, I had just kind of assumed I would be able to link the Picos together with an I2C connection, but as it turns out, it might not actually be so simple to link them together in this way. You would need to have a master Pico and slave Picos, and I don't think the RP2040 has the slave functionality, or maybe I just haven't figured it out yet. But for the moment, I do have a master, and it tells the other systems, eyes and brows, how to behave based on the two digital inputs that I would have used for I2C. Using binary logic, two bits gives me four possible combinations, so I can encode four different states. For the brows, these are up, down, happy, and sad. And for the eyes, I have closed, random, looking around, and blinking, and this open mode, which is possessed for some reason. I'll figure that out at a later date. Using Python and a serial connection, I developed a quick Qt application that would let me test all of this functionality from a single control panel, using the mouth peeker as the master, which instructs the eye board and the eyebrow board, which is a little different from my initial plan, but it's working pretty well for now. To polish off the skull, I added a fan to keep all of these electronics cool, and some panels to keep it secure. So this face, in fairness, does look pretty cooked. The eyelids are way too thick, which is mostly just because I didn't have enough control of the silicone as I poured it, so it looks like severe hair fever. Legally, I'm confident that I can make this video to educate and inform about the engineering behind this concept of magnetic attachment and deformation, and I am going to provide the open source files for the underlying mechanism, not including the magnets, link in description. But beyond that, I'm not sure. I need to befriend a patent attorney, someone who can tell me if I can distribute this as an open source design. As for the face, I know it will look so much better once I have the thickness sorted out and the jig designed, but next I want to work on a neck, which you can actually get early CAD access to on my Patreon page or YouTube subscription. Thanks again for watching guys and a huge thank you to all of my supporters and I'll see you in the next video.